Welcome to part 2 of Clinical Anatomy of the Foot and Ankle for Athletic Training. Here we'll be discussing the muscles of the lower leg, foot, and ankle, blood supply for the lower leg, foot, and ankle, as well as neurological innervation. And working distally into the foot and ankle, we can now see the muscles become tendons and attach to the foot. And looking at the medial view of the foot and ankle, an easy way to remember the three tendons that run on the medial aspect are Tom, Dick, and Harry. Tom, the tibialis posterior, Dick, the flexor digitorum longus, and Harry, the flexor halicus longus. Just an easy way to remember those three tendons. As we work distally, we now see the tibialis anterior. And looking at a dorsal view of the foot and ankle, we see the extensor digitorum longus, the perineus brevis, perineus longus, extensor halicus brevis, extensor halicus longus, and extensor digitorum brevis. And switching from a dorsal view of the foot and ankle to a plantar view, we're going to start from most proximal to distal. We see first the plantar fascia, then the flexor digitorum brevis, the abductor digiti minimi, the abductor halicus, and the lumbrical muscles. The lumbrical muscles are four small skeletal muscles that are accessory tendons of the flexor digitorum longus and numbered from the medial side of the foot. And moving even further distally, we now come to the hallux sesamoid. Here, there are actually two small bones 
referred to as sesamoid bones because they are floating, much like the patella is a sesamoid bone. We have the medial sesamoid, the lateral sesamoid, and between these two sesamoids, we have the intersesamoid ligament. And working counterclockwise, we have the deep transverse metatarsal ligament, the transverse head of the adductor hallucis, the oblique head of the adductor hallucis, the lateral head of the flexor hallucis brevis, the medial head of the flexor hallucis brevis, the abductor hallucis, and we're back to the medial sesamoid. Surrounding this joint is also a joint capsule. We now move from muscles and tendons to arteries and veins of the lower leg. In looking at the leg from proximal to distal, we'll find both the femoral vein and artery, the deep femoral artery, the great saphenous vein, the popliteal or popliteal artery, depending on your pronunciation, the posterior tibial artery, anterior tibial artery, and finally, the arcuate artery. Let's take a closer look at the distal portion of the arteries and veins. Here, in looking at the dorsal surface, you first see the dorsal pedis artery. Here, we normally will go ahead and take a dorsal pedal pulse at this very point where the arrow is pointing. So we work this way, we will now see the lateral tarsal artery, the dorsal, metatarsal, and digital arteries. And if we look on the plantar surface, we'll see the lateral plantar artery and the medial plantar artery. We'll now look at the nerves that serve the lower leg, foot, and ankle. In looking at a posterior view of the leg, you'll first see the common perineal nerve in the orange, followed by the tibial nerve in pink, the sural nerve in blue, and finally on the plantar aspect of the foot, the medial and lateral plantar nerves. Here you can see a better view of the posterior tibial nerve and how it branches off to become that medial and lateral plantar nerve. This posterior tibial nerve travels posterior to the medial malleoli and runs parallel with the posterior tibial artery and vein. Finally, we look at a lateral view of the lower leg at foot and ankle. Starting once again with the common perineal nerve, we then travel distally to branch off to the deep perineal nerve and the superficial perineal nerve. The superficial perineal nerve then branches to the perineus longus and perineus brevis. Finally, we end with the lateral cutaneous branch of the nerves. We can now see the neurological innervation for each part of the lower leg, ankle, and foot. The deep perineal nerve serves the anterior compartment, the superficial perineal nerve, the lateral compartment, the sural nerve innervates the posterior and lateral leg and lateral foot, and finally the saphenous nerve innervates the skin on the medial ankle and the foot. I'll now provide additional slides, and in those you will see the nerve root and innervation for each muscle in the lower leg foot and ankle. Rather than go over every single muscle, their neurological innervation, origin, insertion, and action, I provided multiple tables in which you can view at your own convenience with the PowerPoint slides provided via the email. If you have any questions from this point, feel free to email me at any time. Thank you.